What's up all you good guys and gals? It's the Ted. Pat and I had a fun episode. It's been a while. It was fun to break some of the uh, some of the time away that we've had in between podcasts. We go into it a little bit. Both of us have been personally busy. But you know what is part of our busyness is our little beloved project here called Good Guys Coffee Company. It's really all about the coffee. Always has been. Always will be. Keep it real. But if you like Ted and Pat, well, this episode has a little bit of good stuff for you. And today we discuss as well coffee fads. Don't think of fads as a bad thing here. These are fun to try. Fun. I should uh, think of an acronym for fad. F-A-D. Fun, always, delicious. There we go. Fun, comma, always delicious. These are the fads we talk about today, including the very first one, which is called a Dal, Dal, well, you got to listen to the podcast. We'll describe it. Talk to you soon. Much love. Keep on, uh, keep on keeping on, my friends. Take care. Hello to all the good people of the good world. It's your uh, hosts, your local hosts with the most, Ted and Pat. Hey, everyone. It's been a while. It has been a while, with appropriate reason, too. Uh, life is busy, not just for Ted and Pat, but everybody out there. So you'll understand uh, at least some of the life trials and tribulations. That's just par for the course of living, really, that Pat and I have been going through literally uh, we're late to starting this podcast only because I had car troubles and uh, with my 2008 original love of my life that is failing me year after year as time marches on. And so there's just things like that that always pop up that get in the way. So I spent four hours at the mechanic shop thinking, man, I could use more coffee. That was my first thought. I kid you not. (laughs) So here I got home and that's what took me a few minutes, Pat. I was like, I need to make some coffee real quick. Priorities. Yeah. Priorities. Uh, But no, I mean, that's, that's not even the most, most of it. Uh, Pat, tell us about your move a little bit. It's very interesting. Basically. I mean, my lease is up at the end of this month and uh, I've, we've got a place and it's actually going to be the, uh, simplest move I've ever done in my life. And I'm, yeah. I, I currently live in an apartment um, and I, we are moving, I'm moving literally two floors up from my, from where I live right now. He's so moving up. It's a, He's it's a, tra- it up. it's a very, sl- <laughs> it's an easy transition from where I am. Um, it was not easy to find a place because not only is the housing market for buying uh, difficult as a lot of people have yeah. heard, but the renting market has also, to my surprise, has been absurdly uh, competitive. Uh, it was just so hard to find a place. And our plan B was to basically move in an apartment if we have to. Uh, so we're staying in the building. Uh, so that's kind of what has been uh, taking move most of my time for the past. You act, you act so uh, nonchalant about it. You move in with your girlfriend time. for the first time. Yep. I mean... Huge things going on in Patrick's life. Huge <laughs> things. I mean, this does disrupt our plan of buying a camper van and just traveling the U.S. together because I don't think my wife is going to be down for that. And I don't think Christine is going to no. be down. No, no, not but, at all. But I, I, you know, that's OK. I'll move on. I will. I'll find yeah. someone else someday to do it with me. <laughs> but also, I mean, summer, summer is starting up as yeah, normal now and things are basically back open. So scheduling things with friends and family it's things are picking up so things are picking up uh, a lot of you know who have followed along i uh, know that i'm now in the bartending profession once again after like 12 to 13 year hiatus i did a short stint back then and uh yeah as soon as memorial day happened i must have served a thousand uh non-coffee drinks if you know what i mean in a single like shift i mean it's crazy the world is picking up we're happy about that um it's not that you know i'm claiming any uh triumphant we're out of this or anything like that it's just uh realizing that the the 
we've talked about it on air before. Our year as a company has been ups and downs, but I'll tell you what, we've picked up a lot of traction from the, uh, the crowd that wishes to brew at home. And um, it's part of our talk today, in fact, about coffee fads and, and how people go through different uh, forms of their coffee. Their ideas of coffee transform over time. Um, you know, many people before the pandemic never brewed at home, not even once, which was a shock to my system to hear that. But, you know, that it was cool. It was cool to be a part of a lot of people's growth in that way. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, it's definitely been, uh, I mean, the past year and a half, it's like you said, it's been, it's, I feel like it's changed people's pers- as far as coffee goes, because that's the only thing we can really kind of talk about with this is, is, <laughs> um, oh, we can talk about more. But yeah, we can. <laughs> That's I very different. I don't know if you want to hear what I have to say. <laughs> but um, I, as far as coffee goes, just in the past year and a half, I feel like people have definitely focused more on at-home brewing, which for us is good. Um, yeah. But uh, for us, it is good. And what we're about to cover with coffee fads or trends, um, it I guess keeps people interested in in you know in brewing at home, uh, which is also good. Uh, you know, people. People like to, I feel like, kind of shun trends and fads because it's, I don't know. People, not me, man. I own three Yeezys, not <laughs> not pairs, just three. <laughs> uh, I uh, no, I, you're you're right. I I I do shun from a lot of yeah, a lot that. of people. That's because I'm slow to market. Like I don't right. even know what's going on, but until it's over, not that I but care. But for for producers like us, uh, mm-hmm. th- these are actually great things. So, um, you know, they, they oh. keep people, keep people interested. Uh, yeah, can we not- talk about our own personal, uh, coffee fads for a minute? Cause I go through, I, I don't even know if I'd call them, f- they're my own personal fads in that I know they're going to pass. Like I'll do iced coffee fads for myself. I'll do, um, lately I've been doing afternoon espresso every other day, just whenever I feel like it really, I'll go through my own phases like that, where I just like usher in something that's doing it for me for the time period. I don't care if it's going to be forever sort of thing. That That's all I mean. So in that regard, I don't, I don't think any uh, quote unquote fads are a bad thing at all. And I, and, and that's what you're saying too. Is yeah. I mean, I like what we're about to cover a, a good amount of fads here. Uh, I, I will say that I am guilty of a, a large percentage of these. Um, but that's just because, I mean, I, I love coffee, but I enjoy drinking coffee in a variety of ways. I mean, yeah, they all you mix it up and yeah. And they, I mean, they all offer different, uh, I guess it, it, I see that each form, uh, offers a different taste of the coffee that you don't usually get in other forms. So, yeah. um, that's kind of why I do it. I get bored with things pretty quickly when, especially when it comes to food and beverage. So yep. I like to mix it up. When we lived together, you wouldn't eat leftovers for more than a day. Yeah, I would get sick of food. I mean, I'm just a person that likes to just try new things constantly. Yeah, my style is more like I could cook a uh, pot of chili for the week. You know, that's that's yeah. what I would like to do. But yeah. again, my wife likes to switch it up too. So mm-hmm. I'm happy about those things, but I'm more of a person of consistency. So yeah. even if I strike a fad for a while, it's a it's for a while, you know, uh, I'll stick with things for a while until they just drop away. Yeah. So what do you have? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll get into it and I'll start with actually the most recent trends, which a lot of people probably heard. I will say maybe the people who are on the younger side probably heard. Oh. Um, this was, it's called the Dalgona whipped coffee, uh, which was made. The reason why I say the whole age thing uh, is because it was really made famous by the app, TikTok and also Instagram. Oh. Uh, I'm and basically this what this is, if for those who have been living under a rock or just aren't on social media. Me. Uh, it's, it's, it's with, you actually, I think have heard of this because your, your wife is, is on. Both of oh, I'm telling you, uh, go ahead. She brought it up actually to us when it was hot to see if we could do it, but you'll, I'll explain why we won't do it. Um, it's Wait, basically Alexis said this Alexis. Said yeah. Alexis, your wife said this when it was I gotta hot. listen more. Tell me, yeah. I'm going to listen to you though. First, tell me about Dalgona coffee. Dalgona whipped coffee is it's, it's, it's basically like a, a whipped cream coffee, but it's used, it, it uses instant coffee, sugar, and water. Uh, and you basically whip it all up into like a, a, a whipped cream, and then you, mm-hmm. you pop it on top of milk. And the reason why it was so popular was because, well, one, it, it's aesthetically pleasing, uh, but two, mm-hmm. it's, 
super easy to make. Um, and it only involves three or four ingredients. Um, it looks like a light brown and frothy whipped cream. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, so well, in reference cream, to but, what I was saying yeah. with your wife bringing this up is she, I mean, I remember she came, she brought it up when we were all together uh, in the height of this fad, uh, which was only a couple months ago. Uh, it was, I think during the summer or I'm mm. sorry, during the winter. Um, and she asked what, if we should try it um, and like maybe post something about it. And I told her, I said, uh, I would never do this one. I've never tried this one. I don't have any intentions of doing it. And it's, it's purely on the fact that I do not touch instant coffee. Same. Um, and that's the, you, you cannot use regular coffee grounds for this uh, because for those who don't know what instant coffee is um, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like, it basically is like, it's like cocoa, uh, hot cocoa. You mix it with water and it, there's no, um, yeah. it just kind of blends it dissolves. Um, and the, I actually kind of searched to see what actually instant coffee is. Um, and it really is, it's coffee grounds that have had the flavor and the aroma extracted out of it. Usually they say by using, um, like high pressure, uh, water pressure, Mm -hmm. And it becomes like a, a, a coffee concentrate. And then they take the coffee concentrate and they, de they, um, they basically freeze dry it. And yeah. when they freeze dry it, it comes, it forms tiny little crystals, uh, dry, freeze dry crystals. Um, so when you mix those, that's what you see in the containers that they sell in the food stores. Um, yeah. and when you mix those crystals with water and you just mix it with a spoon, it dissolves and becomes a, someone so instant coffee. It, it, it's more the type of coffee that they're using that that yeah me away from the whole thing i mean that sounds like a cool process and all that but it's mm -hmm. usually done with the uh reject yeah it's tend it tends to be it, for the most part it's pretty poor quality coffee yeah yeah you could and it's that. because in that process you're losing you're losing a lot of the flavor and the, the just the stuff that makes coffee good in my in my mm -hmm. eyes um, yeah there are some i mean there's a there's there's a lot of negatives to, to instant coffee um in fact i actually found some uh facts is that uh it has higher traces of acro ac i can't pronounce this word acrylamide it's something acrylamide, you don't want Lord. which is actually it's a it, the name of it isn't so important but what that is is it's a toxic chemical that releases when coffee is roasted um, and that when they, that whole process of them extracting the, the, the aromas and flavors, it actually extracts that toxic chemical as well with it. So there's higher traces of that. They also say that there's just higher traces of chemicals in general, because once again, they're using poor quality coffee, which is most likely not, you know, organic or any of that. Um, I've yet to come across, there might be, I don't know, but the organic, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure you could probably search and find one, um. Sure. But, yeah. but they're not going to take no company. I'm not going to take our best beans and do that to, to the beans, you know, just. Right. I mean, it's a process. It's actually, they say it's actually pretty expensive to even do this, but your outcome is oh, higher. So <laughs> it, the reason why people do this is one, it's just easy to mix water and that in together, but also for the, the producer's standpoint, um, shelf life, those things can last years on the shelf. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, for hey. also this. The, the negatives also, uh, it, the, your positives from, from freshly brewed coffee uh, with the antioxidants, the caffeine, the taste, um, that is all severely depleted with yep. instant coffee. Um, in fact, it has, they said it actually has uh, almost 50% less caffeine than um, regular coffee. Yeah. Um, well, mainly the taste is my issue. Yeah, the, I mean, that's the reason why it's just, yeah, if you want a Dalgona, you're doing yeah. it because it's a sugar. It's a sugar. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's a sugary. It's it's cool for like a cool whip, I guess, type of thing. Yeah. And it looked good. Um, but yeah, that's that yeah, was like a big one. recently. Ted and Pat ain't going to judge you if you do a party and you do this thing. We don't care. We'd love to see it, to, you know, to hear about it. Um, I But eh, it's not going to be an R. I actually have. I actually know a recipe, um, which is better. Uh, it's actually very simple to do. I actually oh. just came across it. I think even on Instagram or something like that. Uh, if you want to make a whipped coffee that's like this without the the instant coffee, is right. um, when you brew. So, for instance, like it, when you brew your coffee, um, 
instead of throwing it out the coffee grounds, the, the wet, damp coffee grounds, mm-hmm. um, take the coffee grounds and pour, there's a certain, um, ratio, but you can look this up, pour it with heavy cream or, um, or any type of cream, uh, milk that will whip, um, mm-hmm. and let it soak for a day. Um, so the, the grounds will soak into that cream and then filter it out and then whip it like you would to make homemade whipped cream. I mean, you add sugar if you want to, Mm -hmm. and that'll make a coffee whipped cream. So it'll look just like this, uh, and be, I don't know, better, I guess you're not using instant coffee. The Pat Uh, Bell lion. There's your way around that one. Um, yeah, man, I I like that idea. We have to try that. I'll do that. Simple. And it, it, you're able to reuse your coffee grounds that have already been used. So. Yeah. And Alexis is known to reuse coffee grounds for a moment. Yeah. There's other, there's other ways you can use coffee grounds. We can get that. Yeah. Get that hey, Pat, grounds. we lost your video. We need to see you. How do we know you're not skipping out on, on work somewhere? I don't know how that happened. All right. Um, I'm back. <laughs> um, <laughs> on to the next one, which this is probably my favorite out of the fads and i like to think that it's not a fad or it's at least it's a fad that's here to stay and i um, guess I'm currently drinking this right now and i guess uh, yeah go for it is it a recipe or is it a brew method it's a brew method is it nitro brew no but that's close we'll get to that is one of them but that's okay. not okay all right though it's uh it's cold brew and oh, yeah <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, basically, we this talked is, about it to people. Yeah. These, it, these are the next couple ones are fads that have been around for a while. Um, yeah. Cold brew, for those who don't know, we've briefly touched on this. It's just extremely coarse grind coffee that sits in room temperature or cold water for it's anywhere from 18 to 24 hours. Um, and then you yeah. filter it out and, and drink it. Um, and easy. it's it's super easy. Uh, the time reason for why, summertime, though. Right. Yeah, exactly. Which is why I got back. I, I do more of it now. Um, in fact, I drink it almost every day um, in the summertime. Mm. Uh, and basically what, why it's, be- I keep losing. Yeah, it's okay. Um, you got my face. <laughs> so basically the, the, why people do cold brew um, is you get a smoother and sweeter uh, coffee out of it. Um, yeah. because when you are not heating, um, the lack of heat basically prevents a lot of the solubles in co- in regular coffee, uh, from, uh, it basically by not heating up the coffee, uh, it makes it smoother and the, the bitterness yeah. isn't much as much there. Um, and it has a lower acidity. Uh, so which for people who, you know, suffer from, acid reflux or just stomach issues in general from coffee. Uh, it actually is a easier on the stomach form. Yeah. I'm going to do this soon. Uh, I've, I've said it on air. I'll, I'll remind people with those with a French press literally can just set themselves up in the morning for the next morning. Uh, if they put in, you know, full French press with the appropriate amount of, uh, coarse beans, which you do with a French press anyway, fill with water, put it in the fridge, uh, saran wrap or a plate over it just because i don't you, you can't you can't plunge it is what i'm right. is what i'm gonna tell you all so you plunge it the next day and then you've got your cold brew um just like that it is yeah, very it's easy. perfect it's literally perfect for summertime it also has it i find it has a uh, a stronger taste as well um and they yeah. say it has has a little bit higher uh, percentage of caffeine it's, it's it. sitting there for 24 hours you right. know regular french press has four minutes so I mean, right it's a different method. And it, right. It has I mean, methods. I always loved, uh, before I even got into cold brew stuff, I I've always loved just iced coffee. Um, I still do, but it's such a different flavor from iced coffee. I found, uh, it it's such a different flavor from iced coffee to cold brew. Uh, so, you know, it's a teach it around, but yeah, that's a big one. Um, yeah. the next one, which you actually thought I was drinking was nitro coffees. Um, which, I mean, this is one that if you go into any big, uh, coffee chain. Now they're all doing it. Everyone does nitro coffees. Um, and what that is, is it's basically how it sounds is it's cold brew coffee. Usually you can do it with iced coffee, but not many places do that. Um, because, uh, the sweetness in that cold brew actually works. It pairs perfectly, uh, when they infuse it with nitrogen gas, uh, and it just makes it even more, I mean, it's, it's more of a dessert how I find it. Um, yeah, it, it's, it it's looks a like lot a about, little, looks like a little powder keg inside of your yep, fridge. Yep. I actually, so a lot of places, uh, 
coffee shops and like I said, the corporate, um, they, they now have them in their places and they're basically using kegerators. Uh, you'll see them on tap. Uh, mm-hmm. Those are all nitro coffees. I, I have an at home one, which you can actually buy from Amazon. I, uh, and it's, it looks like a little mini keg and there's little cartridges that you can buy also on Amazon, which are fairly cheap. It's just nitrous cartridges. Uh, and you can, it's like a mini keg basically for, for coffee. And it looks like when it comes out, it looks like a Guinness, uh, because Guinness is, is, you know, it has nitrous and gas in Guinness. Uh, mm. um, but basically what the, the main thing of that is it's, it's, it's like a, the mouthfeel is different because nitrogen is like tiny bubbles and it, it gives it a, a um, it's like a creaminess uh, yeah. and like a, um, like a satiny feel in the mouth. Satin. Yes. Satin. Yeah. I don't like it personally. Yeah. Yeah. It's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. Um, it, it, I, I mean, they mix it with, with milks and stuff. I actually love it by itself just because it's naturally just sweet. And- He's a purist. Yeah. <laughs> um, the next one is actually also what I'm drinking in this is the uh, oat milk uh, oh. espresso drinks or just non-dairy milks in general with coffees. Uh, I mean, this one, if you go to the store, any place, I say in the past year, this one really exploded was the oat milk lattes, the oat milk uh, nitro cold brew, stuff like that. I mean, anything packaged coffees are all oat milk everything um and i mean milk in general the reason why for you know since coffee has been a thing uh milk the reason why you mix milk with coffee is to cut the bitterness of coffee that's usually why they do it uh why anyone does it um but with oat oat milk and non-dairy bad coffee out there right and that's i actually think that's what it does come down to is you're cutting i mean if you have good coffee i mean Call it purists or or snobs or if I you're having good snob. coffee, if you're having good coffee, uh, you probably don't need yeah milk of any sort. I like to put it in because it makes it like a treat for me. I don't drink milk right. with my coffee all the time. I actually prefer it black, um, but it does make it like a. I see it as a dessert when you mix milk. Yeah, if it's after dinner, that's a particularly nice time. I'll, yeah. I'll, if if exactly. it's even there, rare, I don't even have it, you know, but you do, you got the, the oat milk. Mm-hmm. I got into, I, I would say this is a fad that I highly got into and I never really, gave, I mean, I never gave oat milk a try, but I like it just because it is, it's naturally sweet. Um, yeah. I just find that the non-dairy milks in general um, are one better for you, but two, they, they're easier yeah, but, on the stomach. But like almond milk, t- you might agree, doesn't do the same trick in coffee. No, no. Well, the reason, the, the other reason why I say, well, oat milk is a big one is because it, it actually has the, uh, the creaminess that you, I don't see, I don't yeah. see that you find in almond milks or stuff yeah. like the, the other nut milks per se. Um, coconut milk is creamy, but coconut, the issue with coconut milk is the flavor can be overpowering. Yeah. It has its own taste. Yeah. That Whereas oat milk is a lot more subtle of a flavor. Um, cool. I'll good. try that out soon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I recommend oat milk if you're, if you like the creaminess of a milk and probably lasts dairy. a little longer than milk, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Right. I mean, the other, the main reason why these non-dairy milks, well, another big reason these non-dairy milks have become a big thing, uh, <laughs> is lactose intolerance. A lot of people, yep. on that. um, vegan lifestyles, it prevents, inf- you know, inflammations, hormones, antibiotics that you find, uh, with dairy, you yeah. know, um, and then ethical issues. So it's just kind of our generation coming up. We're a lot more into the whole sustainability and, and just like looking at, you know, we're more interested in, in what we put into our bodies now. Yeah. Uh, hey, but, that's why we do only organic coffee. It's the same. Yeah, thing. that's exactly it. Likewise, I've probably had one glass of milk in the last 10 years and the first 20 years of my existence, I probably had a thousand glasses of milk a year, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. Big, I mean, we grew up, you and I grew up on milk. I mean, yeah. I remember but for a very small period of time when we lived together, we did still buy milk. Uh-huh. I remember that actually. Now you yeah. And, through and I took a lot of it. I stopped and I, I probably wasn't drinking milk. I don't know, maybe one or two glasses a year. Yeah. For a while. You know what the problem was at uh, Widener where we went? Uh, yeah. They had milk on tap. <laughs> you know what I mean? We were just yeah. all us people in the gym, you know, you whatever i'm not gonna go over this <laughs> you just think you're you know you're absorbing the protein out of milk so you yeah. Know, like calcium yeah then we yeah. realize there's other ways to get all that stuff 
That's right. Okay. Yeah. By the way, I recently weighed myself, not because I was actually weighing a package I needed to ship. So <laughs> I like, so I needed to weigh my, I haven't weighed myself. Right. And I'm over 50 pounds lighter from college and I don't, it's not a big difference. I don't feel any, di- I'm just like, wow, I guess that's what happens when you don't drink as much milk, eat as much poop food. I uh, don't drink nearly as much, you know, I'm, I'm not exactly like running or anything on a regular schedule, although I keep active, but I was like, man, all these, I believe milk to be one of those things like I'll t- dairy to it's like anything true moderation can be just fine. Not arguing against that. Um, and that, and that's why we started talking about this. Yeah. But milk goes bad fast. Unless, uh, unless you buy the little one, you can get away with it, but you're not going to be able to play the moderation game with a gallon of milk to yourself. It's going to go bad. It just doesn't make sense. So yeah, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, that, I agree. It runs in the thing. system. Yeah. yeah. Um, I still next one, the less, <laughs> cheese, less cheese than ever in my life, but still a little cheese. Yeah. Cheese is the hardest one I find out of dairy group that's everybody says hard to get off with true Um, true the next one and this topic i actually i always think of your wife because she really was into this how dare you think of Uh, in fact i think this was how i saw her drink more of this (laughs) more coffee this way than i did uh actually seeing her drink how did she do it she's definitely she drinks more coffee now than she did but i remember when you first were with her she rarely drank coffee right she's up to about two ounces she does about seven, eight ounces a day now, which is a lot more than what she used to do. But, yeah. uh, yeah, this, this one, uh, is coffee cocktails and, uh, yeah. uh, and it's basically just mixing coffee or espresso with spirits or even beers have become a big thing. Um, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, I've well, seen actually with coffee. Like, yes. I, brewed with I, 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 I yeah. Cold brew. It's yeah. They have cold brew that. I mean, Pabst Blue Ribbon actually is one of the big ones they have. A, it was one of the first ones I saw that actually has a, a cold brew, uh, beer. Um, which I actually tried and it was, it was just like drinking kind of like a milkshake. It was kind of disgusting, but to each yeah. um, also with the spirits uh, before I get into like the actual craft cocktails, um, you'll see companies like, for instance, Jameson now has a bottle. It's, it's Jameson whiskey mixed with cold brew. And a lot of these whiskey, I, I think I'm sure there's other types of spirits out there that are mixing cold brew with their, um, with their liquor. So yeah, well, Jameson's the traditional brand name in a Irish coffee. So they kind of right. already have that playing for them. Um, mm-hmm. it coincides, good. the flavors very coincide with whiskey and a, and a cold brew. Um, yeah, we've, we've done it a few times. I have yet to try that, but I mean, I'm talking about the actual mixture that they make, but yes, wow. I've done, obviously I've done, uh, Irish coffees. Uh, Irish coffees is actually another example. Uh, and mm-hmm. that's been around forever, but also this is the big one that I feel like with this, That has become, it's always been around, but I feel like this has made a big resurgence in the past year or so, um, is espresso martinis. And this is the one that reminds me of your wife. Uh, my girlfriend drinks them all the time. Uh, and this reminds me of, we were at this wedding this past weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, amazing wedding. It was a mutual friend of Ted and I's, uh, and, uh, at the reception, at late night where they bring out the desserts they had a espresso uh bar basically set up at the wedding and actually it was pretty good espresso i had an espresso drink there um you want to know why i missed it you want to know why i missed the espresso because i went for seconds up at the ice cream bar Mm. and i went back to their dessert their dessert (laughs) spread at this wedding was insane i've never seen a bigger dessert spread in my life at a wedding it was hey congrats to the bows it was yeah. never wrong. But um, how I even knew that they had an espresso bar there um, because it was in a different room from the actual ceremony is because I saw people with espresso martinis and I asked, I forgot who it was, but I asked them, I said, how did you get espresso? It's an open bar, but they're not, they don't have drinks. They said, you have to get it at the, you have to get your espresso shot at the espresso station, <laughs> bring it over and they'll mix it for you at the bar. Cool. Um, and I turn around and I saw I want to say I saw a dozen, most of them were women, but there was a couple of guys who indulged as well who were drinking these espresso martinis. And I was like, this has become a thing now. Yo, all right. So do you know how they made them? Do they do cocoa powder? Cocoa? Uh, cacao? I didn't look at actually how they were doing it. Gotcha. Well, but I know we would do it in house space. is I would make a real espresso shot, vodka and uh, cocoa powder. Right. Um, I'm pretty, you know, a little bit of coconut milk, too, is what my wife would do. 
Um, and yeah, it does. It tastes pretty good. It's different than when you go to a bar bar. I mean, chances are they don't have an espresso machine. They're going to give you a uh, coffee liqueur. And so it's a different thing entirely, but those are good too. Just, you know, you know, us like back to the purest thing. It's yeah. like, well, I would like a real espresso shot if I can. I don't even like uh, martinis per se, but I actually really enjoy espresso martinis. I just enjoy yeah. it. Um, exactly. Yeah, exactly. The, um, uh, I would do, uh, you know, Bailey's is uh, yeah. Or with that, you could yeah. do Bailey's in there too. Actually, right. just a touch, it's fine. Or Kahlua, yeah. Kahlua is uh, uh, often paired with vodka and coffee drinks. And yeah, stuff. It's a great pairing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this next one actually is a very interesting one. I've actually tried this recently. I had a free sample of it somewhere. Is uh, mushroom coffee? Um, and yeah. what it is, you've you've, uh, you've probably unknowingly have seen these around they've popped up in the past couple of years uh and it's just a mixture of uh coffee grinds and uh dry powdered mushrooms um and they use a very they use various uh types of mushrooms there's a couple uh reishis chagas and then the one that i've always seen is lion's mane um and in fact the lion's mane is the one that i actually tried um and the reason why it's become a thing um is mostly from what they say, well, besides having the mushrooms in there, which provide you with extra antioxidants and extra fiber and vitamins uh, that mushrooms tend to give you. Uh, the main focus of it is that by mixing the mushrooms in the coffee grinds, it actually coincides the, uh, or counteracts the, um, the effects, the negative effects of caffeine. So jitters yep. and crashing, uh, it actually assists with that. Um, so mm -hmm. I tried it. I didn't try it just for the jitter crash part. I just wanted to see what it tastes like. Um, and for the most part, it actually just tastes like regular coffee. I found that it had a little slightly, slight yeah. different aftertaste, but I wouldn't have known if someone served it to me. That's uh, for everyone's knowledge. That's coming a lot. That's uh, that's a lot coming from Pat because uh, he hates mushrooms. I hate mushrooms. I hate mushrooms. With, with a passion. So take right. that. Take what he's saying. Uh, <laughs> When yeah. it comes to coffee, I'll try it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no I'm life, surprised no, you I, even I, tried it. Quite honestly, mushrooms. but if if you're if even you're saying that it's decent, well, yeah, I mean, give it a try is what I say. Um, yeah, I've heard about this caffeine uh, counteraction. Um, of course, if you don't, you know, the other answer to having less caffeine is simply drink less coffee, uh, or yeah, not my style. You could water down your coffee too, but exactly. I don't like that. Um, another way to do less, less caffeine, quick note, a quick dump of hot water over the, the beans, like a light, uh, watering of the beans and toss that out. So right. it kind of extracts that initial, uh, caffeine, um, extraction from the water. And then you dump that out and then you make your regular, your standard brew. Right. Um, and then I, it actually, this, this will tie in. I got, I only got two more here. Uh, this. This actually, this mushroom coffee blend actually ties into an, a new, this is probably the newest trend and you, not many people probably heard of it yet uh, because it's the, it, it's this year is when it's really come out um, is CBD infused coffee, yep. um, which it's been around for a couple of years, but it's really starting to take off recently. And you'll probably start to see and hear more about this. Um, and it, it's just essentially a CBD oil uh, mixed with coffee and CBD oil is cannab cannabid 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 oil, I think is actually how it's pronounced. Cannabid oil uh, is the scientific name for uh, this. Um, it's a non psychoactive compound that's derived from the cannabis plant. Um, yep. And uh, you've seen CBD oils and stuff now all over the place with health products and mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. So it's, it's gotten into coffee um, and it basically works the same reason why how how they're mixing mushrooms with coffee is it it, it counteracts the the negative effects of caffeine um mm -hmm. and uh it, it seems as if that cbd infused coffee actually seems to be uh more potent as far as the um counteracting the effects of caffeine uh because it um it it has to do with um the molecular structure, uh, it basically slows down the absorption rate of caffeine through your liver. Um, and, uh, so it actually not only does it counteract the 
effects like anxiousness and heart rate and the jitters, but it, um, it actually prolongs the effects of caffeine. So the positive effects of caffeine. So your alertness, this is one I'd like to try. I don't have, I actually, it's, it's, I browse the bit to see if people are selling it, which they are. It's kind of expensive right now to get CBD infused coffee, but that's because it's a new trend. So, um, I see the price going down and probably getting easier to, to, to purchase in the Mm -hmm. future. Cool, man. Um, but yeah, it's something that it, I'd be willing to try. It's, it's, I mean, the negatives of coffee, it kind of assists with, um, yeah, plus it would... also helps with like inflammation and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, all that's right. Cool. Well, that's cool. Well, I'll, I'm down to do that one with you. Save yeah. that one for us together. And then, and then the last one here, it's, it's, you've seen this is it's called ready to drink coffee. It's, or known as RTD beverages. And that just simply is, uh, packaged or canned coffee that would otherwise be mixed or prepared on your own. Uh, so they've just canned it. So you see this everywhere now, uh, food stores, uh, uh, coffee shops, everyone's canning full brew coffee, nitro full brew coffees are all being and flavored coffees are all being canned. Uh, and that's yeah. basically because, um, I, I didn't realize this, but they're saying that, um, It's the fastest, these RCD beverages are the fastest growing non-alcoholic beverage categories now. In fact, they think by the end of this year, 2021, canned uh, RCD beverages, canned coffee will overtake soda sales this year. Wow. Just because this is a, uh, our generation, once again, is coming up. It's better for health uh, and because it's it's a healthier, instead of picking up a can of soda, you're picking up a can of coffee, which uh, I mean, I'm not going to say replace either or, but um, it's a healthier choice to drink canned coffee as opposed to canned soda. Yeah, watch, watch your labels, pe- your people. Right. Yeah. Look, I mean, these things can get you too. If you pick up some of these flavored canned coffees, look at the label because they're riddled, riddled with sugars um, and chemicals, stuff like that. There's a couple yeah. of big companies out there that have cleaner um, canned coffees. So just check the labels. It's yeah. Yeah, it's like anything that has a long storage or any storage life at all. Um, yeah. It's the major difference that we consider our coffee to be uh, uh, kind of. I'll, I'll use the word superior in this in this one regard. All right, and I mean it in a technical sense of um, being fresher. You know, so we look we do things as a company, you and me, dude. That we try we. I don't even know if this would be in our wheelhouse to ever even right. want to enter the canned game where you got to start adding things to make it last longer or what have you. It's just not for me exactly. I don't know, you know, but I'm not judging anyone who does. It's just a matter of like, if you pick up, uh, you ever hear the trick of shopping healthy in a grocery store, you just kind of stick to the perimeter. Right. You know? yep. If you go down all the aisles, that's all stuff that can last for years. And, you, you make you make trade offs for for health purposes when we when you start going down that route. Right. Uh, I'm interested. I have to check these out on my own, though. I wonder. Yeah, there are some there's some ones I've actually seen that are literally just coffee. in them. I've, I've actually had a couple. Um, I I've tried the flavored ones as well. But yeah, the, I mean, they're they're good. They, just, they basically they the main reason why they've become so big, not only are they just quick options for grab and go for consumers, but for the producers themselves, like you actually just touched base on is a longer shelf life. Uh, and that's why these places have all really put a lot of money into selling these. Um, but yeah, you can find, you just got to look, you can find some really just pure coffee ones and the way they're preserved is they're just, they're just, it's like any canned item usually is there's the pressurized, uh, which helps them last longer, but yeah. Well, and and that is, that is your fads. I mean, there's plenty of other ones that we get into later, but these are the big ones. Yeah. There's some core ones to work with. Uh, let us know if anyone tastes any of them or has some new ones in mind that'd be very great to hear i'll tell you aside from my little fads of timing and how i'm doing it i also lately if i could think of it in advance well enough by an hour i'll make espresso put it in the freezer and then in that about an hour i'll pour it over ice and i just have an iced espresso shot and i could drink that for for a whole hour yeah even though it's just a little shot like you know, you can always make up your own recipes. We we encourage that. We encourage some experimentation. Yeah, please do. Like, Let us know. I mean, yeah. any of these. These yeah. sound like some cool, easy ways to experiment with uh, something new with something old. And uh, hey, let us know if you have any success stories on that. I'm going to have to contact Jen and ask her <laughs> what, what she, what she can do with some beans, some uh, 
I wonder if she has any. Eh, probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, everyone, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, we know it's been a while since our last, po- last podcast, of course, mm-hmm. but thank you for uh, the patience. Uh, hey, we'll, we'll put something together soon. Yeah, right? yeah, we'll keep it consistent. All right, everyone. Change is always underway with us. We really enjoy uh, yours, yourselves and our company, and here we are together. So thank you and peace. See you guys. See you, Pat. See you, Ted.